So, big day for Dot Big Bang today. We released uh, scripting to public, and uh, that means you can now properly make your own interactive games on Dot Big Bang, not just reusing the things that we've already made and uh, put up for you. And what I thought I'd do today in this stream is really just take an overview of the edited changes that we've made and also just do like a really straightforward simple introduction to scripting and how it works and the kinds of things that you can get done with it easily so without any more waffle let's get started uh, you can create a new game by clicking on build worlds and you can also just visit this url and we're going to make uh, a new intro to magic tutorial game and what this does under the hood is creates your own copy of this game so I now have my own Intro to Magic tutorial game, which is mine, and I can do what I like to it without messing up the original. Uh, the two icons in the middle here are undo and redo. So when you make a change, you can undo it and redo it. And it keeps a, a stack of everything that's happened. Up in the top right here, we can save. So currently this game is not saved. Uh, so if I close this page, I will lose everything that I've done. So I'm going to open it up. It's called Mer 11T1's Intro to Magic 101. Published, it's remixable, and I can whack save, and it'll save it. And we have a nice new UI, which actually tells you what's going on. Next to that, and you can save your game at any time, and this will also save the state of all your scripts and everything, so you don't need to worry that you've forgotten to save something. Uh, next to that, we have the ability to stop the game and start the game and then also pause the game's execution and play it again which is useful for debugging and just generally trying to understand what's going on and also just for you know you write some code you stop and start the game again because it needs to to have that done to take effect coming around to the bottom here uh, you can see every single voxel object that is in this game so for example the bookcase here is this bookcase here and I can pull one out and just drag it into the world. So we can see everything that's in this game and these tabs will then show me everything that I've made personally. So I made this little devil for one of their weekly art challenges that just animates everything that I've liked. So all of the voxel objects that other people have made that I've hit like on, they're available to you in here if uh, if the person has shared them and let, let you use them. And then we have everything. Uh, and that is literally every voxel object that's on Dot Big Bang. And it's also fully searchable. All of these things you can search for, like plinth, for example, which is something we use a lot for these kind of like teleport paddy looking things. Behaviors, they are uh, elements. If we get a voxel object, we can we can see that better. Let's get the turtle in there. So behaviors are scripts, essentially that we've written and made available that are kind of handy for people without much programming experience to add behavior to their game in a drag and drop sort of manner. So that's what behaviors do. And if we just get the code here and uh, just get rid of this, it will stop the script executing. So that script is something we'll actually be able to look at as well and edit. And templates, we've kind of gone through this a bit with the template toys how to and uh, I'm pretty sure Ashley's used them in her stream as well. But there are a bunch of elements you can drag into the game that basically affect various bits and pieces. So a cake that makes you bigger as an example. And if you stop and play again, we're back to normal. So we had the entity panel up there, but I'm not gonna talk about it just now because we're gonna talk about the buttons along the top here. Uh, we have the full screen button, which is kind of self-explanatory. Share game lets you create a multiplayer version of this game. So you can click it and it needs to be saved in this case. So it'll make sure you go through the right flow. If we save, then we'll see what happens when we click it again. We can copy the URL and if you, if you click go, what it's done is appended this MP equals and then a, a little GUID on the end there. And that's basically to give you your own multiplayer session. So you can share that URL by copying it from in here as well and pasting it to your friends and they can click on it and join you and edit alongside you as well. Edit game basically decides whether you're in the playing mode or in the editing mode. Uh, this toggle bird's eye view 
Bird's eye camera is one you can fly around, whereas going into the player camera is the camera that you have when you're playing the game. Aha, yes. And so here we have John and we have Chris. John, our social media manager. Chris, our community manager in here running around with me. Uh, mood is a way of kind of controlling the overall lighting uh, and some of the kind of like skybox uh, colors. You can't really see the skybox from in here. I oh, know you can, you can see it through the roof. So, you know, we can change quite drastically the feel of this game just by clicking and changing the mood. That one's pretty cool. This one's pretty extreme. This one is like a much darker version of what was there before. Um, this one is nice and spooky. Uh, so we'll stick with the spooky one just so we can see what's going on. Uh, and a few other things here. You can see all of the entities in the game. So we have this entity search. And this has a lot of like power user features that I'll explain at a later date. But essentially you can just type in an entity name. So we can see lots of gray brick rules. But if we only want to see gray brick walls, we can do that as well. So there's many, many walls in this game. And we can also select them in here. So we can move between them. We can do multiple, do multiple selection. And, uh, and it will show the uh, properties that are shared between the things that have been multiply selected as well. And as well as the individual things. So we can see the gray brick wall has nothing exciting on it at all. But if we look at something else, for example, the camera, you can see that the camera has two different scripts on it. Uh, and this kind of brings us to the entity browser. Uh, well, this is the an entity search. This is the entity properties, I should say. And entities have right now exposed a name, which is what they're called in the editor. Um, and tags and tags are kind of like a way of grouping entities together or specifying information to the engine right now. So for example, this no raycast tag means that any raycasts that are done in the game that is like sending out a line from a, one point into the distance will tell you what it hits along the way. But with no raycast tagged on there, you won't find this entity in a raycast. It will just be ignored for the purposes of raycasting, which can be quite useful. There are a bunch of other engine level scripts and uh, we'll be updating our docs with some of those uh, shortly. But for now, you can probably find most of them just by clicking around and seeing uh, what things have been tagged with. You can also add your own tags that are game specific uh, and that can be useful for a lot of things. And again, as we go further on, like I'm gonna be doing this scripting segment every uh, week from now on and tags and basically using those to help organize and structure games is a big part of like how we've discovered making games in Bang, the best way of doing it even. And so a little bit further down, uh, we can see how the entity is set up. So in Dot Big Bang, an entity is essentially an empty box that you need to fill with stuff that describe what that empty box actually is. And we call those things components, which is a very common way of setting these things up. You may have heard of entities and components before, or game objects and components if you've come from Unity. Uh, we're very similar. So right now, you can't see the components that are on this entity. But if I cheat and open up a secret thing, you can see the components that are on this bookcase. It has no scripts, but it has three components, has a transform, it has some collision, and it has an object renderer, which is how this voxel object, uh, the bookcase is being shown. So the entity does have stuff on it, even though right now you can't see it. And the only reason these things are not over here as well is that we haven't quite completed the work to make all of them accessible. So uh, if you want to know a little bit more about this secret panel and you're at the point in your scripting journey where you need to be able to deal with other components, then pop into Discord and chat to us and we'll tell you how to get hold of it. But right now, people should just focus on scripts and doing things with scripts because that's what we have stably released. So Pumpkin has a bunch of scripts on them and you basically create multiple different scripts and a script does like one little job. And so, you know, you can see Pumpkin is sitting here 
and it has some movement and it has some bubbling and it's looking at me as the player so if i if i move into the controls pumpkin follows me around and i can press e on pumpkin and i can listen to what they have to say and so every all of this also has keyboard shortcuts so control z works control y and you and that sort of thing work and you can kind of see in this room we have lots of simple motion stuff going on our quick start scripts let you look at all the code so we have up here like the entity panel you can turn it on and off we have some help and we have the script editor here so you can bring the script editor up and down as well but you can also open it from the script itself which will open up that script and so this is the full text editing engine that's in Visual Studio Code. So we're just using that uh, and it fully understands TypeScript and all of that sort of thing. And we're also then compiling this script behind the scenes into JavaScript, which is pretty cool. And as you can see, all of our scripts are fully commented, in particular in this uh, intro game the way to understand what's happening is to check out the scripts and read the comments. You can play with the, the kind of controls over here. So, you know, the amplitude is 10. If I make the amplitude 40, it goes into the ground and into the ceiling. You can see it in the background hovering up and down. But I can't really change the script. So I'm going to have to remix the script, which gives me my own version of it. If I close this one down, I can rename it. Meh. And I can save it and then I can add it onto here. So I just want to see my scripts. Can I add that on? And I can see it's 5, 40, and Y, 5, 10, and Y. So if I remove this script, you can see uh, it's still going up and down, it's still working. I've just changed runtime which script I'm using. So this is how you go about exploring and understanding the intro to, to magic game, essentially.